Thank you for the opportunity. We want to congratulate Korea for the inauguration of the first female president yesterday. So congratulations to everybody. The topic given to Ghana Embassy is to explain to you what strategies a Korean investor needed to enter Ghana. If a company is interested to go to Ghana, what advice can the embassy offer to potential investor to go to Ghana? So this will be the outline of the presentation. Um, I must admit that if I had stood by the ambassador from Cote d'Ivoire, you couldn't have identified any difference between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. Except when he speaks French. And some of us from Ghana also speak French. So sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish between people from Africa. What I want to say is that all the presentation that His Excellency made regarding potential investment opportunities in Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana also has the same in terms of natural resources. But we are going to actually explain what we need to do when you want to enter Ghana market. So that's the map of Ghana. Ghana is located in West Africa and actually shares what that was, Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> we have a very natural, it's a naturally beautiful country, friendly people, and mostly peaceful nation in Africa, if not all the um, continent. Everybody will bear witness that when you're looking for an environment to extend your business, to invest your money, you have to enjoy safety. And Ghana is one of the countries classified the whole world as one of the peaceful nations. We have democracy is really working in Ghana. I'm sure those of you who are following politics in Africa will bear witness that Ghana democracy has come to say. Our main exports are gold. As I said, Cote d'Ivoire talk about gold. Ghana has gold. Cote d'Ivoire mentioned about cocoa. Ghana has cocoa. I think the difference between Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana cocoa is the taste. Ghana has a quality taste of the beans. And that is why I'm sure those of you who are eating Ghana chocolate in Korea are really identifying the difference. We have diamond. We have timber. We have oil, and then gas as well. Ghana and Korea actually started diplomatic relations in 1977. But our mission in, in Japan was responsible for South Korea until 1999 that the government felt the need to establish a permanent mission in Korea. So Ghana Embassy has been in this country since 1999 because of the importance of Korea investment in Ghana to the government. What we have observed ever since ambassador and officers came to Korea is that when a Korea company is interested in doing business in Ghana, they always rely on the internet and information that are provided may not be accurate. So people just come to the embassy apply for visa, and go to Ghana to do business without consulting the embassy for any important advice or information. So if you want a good strategy to enter Ghana, our recommendation or suggestion or advice is that, first of all, the first strategy you need to do is to visit the embassy, which is located in Hanamdom, very close to you, and ascertain almost important information that you need. When you go, ambassador has a policy called open policy. Her doors are always opened. She will find time to explain the important information that you need so that you don't go and partner with somebody that may not even be a Ghanaian. Or if it's a Ghanaian, somebody who may not be a business serious person to find yourself wanting. Many Koreans are interested in doing gold business. And they want to go to Ghana they will never come to the embassy to seek advice. They will go and take their visas. And then when there are problems, then they want to call the you know, ambassador for assistance. 
So our first recommendation and suggestion we are giving to Korea potential investors are that is that please call on the embassy, visit the ambassador, and she will explain the most important steps that you need to do or to go through to be able to enter our market in Ghana. The simple reason is that you may not have the knowledge about the cultural or the env business environment in Ghana. So when you visit the various embassies or our embassy, then we can explain the business dynamics, the cultural environment situation to you as a Korean to be able to develop much interest to go and invest in Ghana. Another important factor that you need to consider if you want to go to Ghana is to ensure that when you come to the embassy, as I said earlier on, the embassy will then facilitate to you as a business potential that when you go to Ghana, there's a need to contact specific ministries, departments, and agencies that may provide additional information from apart from what the embassy has given to you or any further technical questions that you want. If the embassy is unable to give instant answer, if you visit there, they will facilitate for you to meet the most important ministries, departments, and agencies to secure most info you know, information that you want. What are those people? If you want to invest in Ghana, you may need to go to the Ministry of Finance to get more information about our funding system. And we can't just walk and go and see a Minister of Finance to discuss business potential. It must be facilitated and coordinated by the embassy. So when you call the embassy as a first strategy, the next one is to ensure that the embassy will identify most MDAs to go and discuss your business interests with them. The government of Ghana is actually has come with a policy of called local content. I'm a Ghanaian and I have come to Korea. If I want to invest in Korea, I can't initially identify an area where I should, I should put my investment into. I must consult a Korean body, a person, to be able to advise that in Korea, if you want to invest here, these areas or other areas are more important to do investment there. So the partner that I will discuss my interest with will also give me more information. And therefore, the knowledge that the person has acquired in Korea will be shared with me. And that's why we call local content. So when you want to go to Ghana, you should be able to identify a Ghanaian serious business partner and then also bring his idea and knowledge to you. You may not have certain information. The local laws you don't know, the immigration situation you don't know, company registration procedure you may not know. But if you partner yourself with a local person, that person will bring the knowledge he has acquired in Ghana to support you to ensure that you achieve the most important objective of going to Ghana to invest. After going through all these processes, you may not have sunk any money into what you want to do. But advice you always offer is that try and sign a simple agreement very simple agreement with a person that you identify in Ghana that we are this company from Korea and we are interested in doing a specific business. However, you may wish you give us specific information. So when the person recommended by the embassy meets with you and discuss all the possible areas, what is important to do is to sign a very simple memorandum of understanding, memorandum of agreement, to tablet and areas of interest that we can incorporate together. As a matter of fact, sometimes language problem, the embassy recommends or advise that anytime you go to Ghana and you sign any MOU or MOA with any Ghanaian business partner, it is important you hand over the document to a lawyer, a legal person, to actually review what is put in the document. The reason is that it could be used as a witness or evidence when there's a disagreement. But if you have a lawyer who has reviewed the information, explain the terms that you may not understand very well, then you can understand before you append your signature to the MOU. This is a very important issue. When you meet your partner in Ghana, you prepare MOU or MOA. But do not sign until a legal advisor has advised you that this area is okay, this area needs to be reviewed before you signed your MOU. 
And the first point I mentioned, anytime you feel like you are not comfortable with what is going on with a partner in Ghana, you should be able to put in a clause, a condition, an agreement that you can withdraw any party who is not interested can withdraw without any problem. It must be part of the MOU that was signed. It's a good strategy for you. How do you enter Ghana market once again? You can enter Ghana market to do business through JV, Korean people call it uh, joint venture. Maybe you may not have the initial capital, it may not be so big enough. So you'll be able to partner somebody as indicated earlier on in the form of percentage. When you are discussing the MOU, all those aspects must be indicated. You could go by 50 50 percent or 40 60, 70 20. 70, 30, or 80, uh, 20, depending upon the capacity of your financial uh, aspect. A Ghanaian man may be able to provide land to establish the business there. He may be able to provide um, administrative services or some are also prepared to counterpart with you what an amount of money to ensure that equally you can build a successful business. Ghana government also allows 100% owned foreign company. You could also go to Ghana that you don't want to partner with any Ghanaian, but you want the company to be owned by you. And these are all an area that will be indicated with your registration processes, or if there's going to be any agreement with the government or agency that are responsible, it must be indicated. So you can enter Ghana market through joint partner and ventureship, fully owned, or you may extend your activities from Korea to Ghana. But so do you, you need an office in Ghana. So you can establish a branch office in Ghana and start the activities ongoing in Ghana. So the another way of entering the market is open a branch office. As we speak, we know Kotra has opened a branch office in Ghana. Uh, Korea Exim Bank has opened a branch office in Ghana. POSCO um, and the POSCO and KEPCO have all open branch offices in Ghana. As a matter of fact, uh, Koika is also, also in Ghana to facilitate those Korea businessmen that are interested in extending their businesses to Ghana. So one of the strategies is that if you're not ready, you could establish an office there and then study the environment very yourself, become convinced, and start the investment processes. Again, you can appoint a representative person to be in Ghana to get all the necessary information that you want. So that anytime you're looking for information for decision-making process purposes, you'll be able to get that accurate information. When you have a rep in Ghana, most often Korean businessmen would like to go to Ghana and sell certain equipment. But it's going to be a bit difficult to say ship um, 1,000 pieces of tractors to, Korea, uh, to Ghana. So what we advise is that if you go through all these processes you are interested, you could knock down your equipment. If it's a tractor, you could knock them down and perhaps set up an assembly plant in Ghana so that you then assemble them. If the demand expands, you do semi-knockdown the first stage and then the second shipment you can do um, complete knockdown so that you assemble them in Ghana as part of investment strategy of the company in question. One advantage is that if you enter Ghana, as Kodiva and Ambassador said, uh, Kodiva is a member of ECOWAS. Ghana is also a member of ECOWAS. Ghana share borders with uh, Kodiva. So within the 50 member states, as a matter of fact, there are 60 member countries, but one is not a member of uh, ECOWAS. So Ghana is actually strategically located in the middle point of ECOWAS. And that is why we saw gateway to Cote d'Ivoire. And Ghana is equally another gateway to West Africa. So if you are actually investing in Ghana, your product is not limited to Ghana market alone. Because if you saw the map, it takes a very short distance. If it's by air, from Ghana to Nigeria, 45 minutes, you're in Nigeria. 45 minutes. As a matter of fact, some of the bigger aircraft takes 30 minutes to arrive in Lagos. So if you have a product in Ghana, it's not meant for 25 million in population located in Ghana alone, but over 300 million people located in West Africa can have access to the product. Another advantage is that Ghana and U.S. takes 10 hours. So since we are also a member of AGWA, if you have open 
company or investment in Ghana, you want to sell your product outside the country, we have access to US markets. It's six hours to Europe, so we have access to six uh, Europe, European markets. And again, as you speak, Korea Air actually go to uh, Kenya, then to, to Ghana, or Emirates through Dubai to Ghana. So if you want to bring your products back to Korea, it's also not difficult to bring the product to Ghana. So we are encouraging more Korean businessmen to extend their investment to Ghana. Um, if you look on the table, we, uh, we came out with the top 10 FDR stores in Ghana since 1994 to 2011. And you see the position of Korea, that Korea was actually a potential investor in Ghana. But I'll put an asterisk on Korea because the figure you're seeing there, as you speak, is not the actual figure. Because I'm sure everybody here is aware that STS had an interest in Ghana. So when the SDS registered to operate in Ghana, the figure was actually added. But since they had not started the operation, that is why the asterisk is there. So if we take the STS component out of it, Korea will then descend. Let's see the next table. See, Korea has moved from the second position in Ghana investment to the ninth position. In terms of number of companies that are registered in Ghana, but as of last year, 2012 alone, 10 potential companies registered in Ghana. In terms of sectorial distribution, these are the areas Korea companies are operating in Ghana. Agri agricultural sector, building and construction, export trade, general trading, liaison manufacturing, service tourism. So as of 2012, we have had 115 Korean companies that have registered in the various aspects in Korea with an estimated figure of five billion uh, billion dollars. It is five billion because we have not factored in the first Astaris Korea where the SES aspect was part of it because they've not started the operation. Ghana is known to Koreans, if not in any area, at least with the area of uh, cocoa cacao, chocolate, and soccer. Because we are rich and dark with human resources and natural resources, which includes mineral wealth, extensive forest resource, resources, and sizable supply of valuable land for crops and livestock production, marine and then freshwater fish stock, and a good potential for hydro and electricity generation are also so in Ghana. We are actually encouraging most Korean companies to go into PPP. IPPP, Independent Power Producers in Ghana, because of the potential we have in Korea, and because we also need that kind of potential and technology that you have, government is calling upon Korean companies into those areas to establish the independent power producer, and the, sure, the guarantee for purchase is there. Government is going to give you a guarantee for purchase, and you'll be hooked onto the national grid, as we have it here as Cape Co. We also have a grid co in Ghana, and then your products, when generated, will be distributed to the various consumers in the country. So these are one of the areas the government is actually calling for investors from Korea to come on board. And I'm sure all of us have been told that Ghana has now be part, become part of the oil um, nations in the world. But when you produce, if a country produces oil, it comes with so many investment opportunities that Koreans are welcome to participate. Now, if you come to Ghana and go through all the process of registration and you want to start a business, what services is the government going to put down, give it to you? Some of the services is what we have over there. We have immigration quota facilitation. Depending upon the value of your investment figure, then the government will decide that you can bring in Koreans of about 10. It's just an example. And then you can take Ghanaians of about 6. In terms of number of people that you intend recruiting, it's determined by the volume of your investment. So this will be facilitated from the embassy to Ghana Investment Promotion Center to the responsible agencies like Minister of Interior, who is responsible for giving the immigration quota to you, so that you know that if your investment figure is 10,000 or 10 million, total amount of, I mean, number of Koreans that can come to Ghana and stay and work. Will be determined by that. 
Some duty exemptions will also be facilitated if you decide to go and extend your business to Ghana. The plant and equipment that you will be sent to Ghana will be tax-free, custom duty, because you are going to use to establish business to generate employment. Government will facilitate to ensure that those equipment will not be taxed at the uh, point of entry. Government is also available. The embassy will facilitate with the Ghana Investment Promotion Center to actually locate land for you if it's a major problem. Because government has established what we call land banks to be able to locate lands to potential investors. And then, as mentioned earlier on, we have so many agencies, de uh, departments, and ministries in Ghana that if you choose to go to Ghana and invest, you need to liaise or communicate with them. And these are services that we are going to facilitate for you if you develop interest in going to Ghana. I was given 15 minutes. So if you see from the presentation, additional information I've been presented, I've been provided to enable you to get investment aspects and the guarantees that the government has given or put in place for potential investors. So after my conclusion, the information is classified as an extra information. If you have any questions related to those areas, my EBO ambassador is here, my senior uh, officer is also here. We are here to provide further questions, information to your questions. So with strong economic growth for the past decade, and that has reduced the poverty level in Ghana, and has also increased the size of middle income people in the country, we are calling on Korea potential investors to extend their business activities to Ghana because we are not going to lose a profit. For example, Samsung is making it big with regard to sales of refrigerators, television sets, mobile phones, etc. in Ghana. Hyundai and other private sector companies dealing in motorcycles and automobile which have surged to virtually every part of Ghana in recent years. As a matter of fact, if you go to Ghana now, Korea car is more than 50% of the number of cars we have. Korea cars have dominated Ghana market. So, we are urging you to come on board. The mobile phone penetration, mobile phone penetration is 100%. Ghana is 25 million population, about. Those who are using mobile phones are 25. But that does not mean that each and individual person is using mobile phone. Some people have got two mobile phones, others have got three. So the active mobile phone operators in Ghana, as we speak now, 25 million. It tells me that it's an area where Korea people can also extend their interest to go. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.